Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. So, are there any questions, doubts? Anybody? Sir, I wanted to ask one thing. Like, yeah. Uh, uh, we introduced a matrix that is uh, delta H. Yeah. So, like, what is the motivation behind that? Uh, yeah, actually, I wanted to write uh, the uh, the virtual work of Cauchy stresses. Uh, so, in terms of product of Cauchy stress tensor and uh, as a matrix and uh, displacement gradient matrix, so that subsequent derivations can be easily done to bring in the uh, either the first plo of stress tensor or the second plo of stress tensor. Okay. Yeah. So, anybody, any other question? So, if there are no questions, so let me start. So, yeah, we are continuing with the finite deformation. It is not writing, so let me close and this file and open it again. Is the screen visible? Okay. Yeah, so we are continuing with the finite uh, deformation. So, uh, the last class I left with the, you uh, know, I discussed the big form and then the virtual work of stresses. So if I just look at that virtual work of stresses, so we denoted that by delta W sigma and uh, I had written that the integration can be, uh, although the original expression it is uh, integration with respect to current uh, configuration but it is translated into the reference configuration. So integration over V naught, uh, the volume in reference configuration. And then we had this delta of epsilon transpose into sigma and dV naught. So I had defined these and uh, I finally said that this can be written as integration over uh, reference volume into trace of this uh, sigma matrix, stress matrix, and this displacement gradient matrix, delta H into dV naught. I also said that, you know, from this six, whatever you get here, the same you will get from this. If you multiply sigma into delta H and then take, take its trace, so you will exactly get what you will get over here. So you would also, I know it can be verified that we will get also this by taking trace of sigma transpose, although of course sigma is a symmetric matrix. So sigma transpose into delta H dV naught. So this will also give the same thing and the integration over J trace of even if you take a sigma into delta H transpose, that will also give the same thing. So these are all same. So this is where I had left. Now we, what we want to do is, sigma is the Cauchy stress defined in the current configuration. Delta S is the displacement gradient that is also with respect to current coordinates, derivatives of the displacement with respect to current coordinates. So we want to uh, write these in terms of the reference coordinates. So if you look at uh, uh, this uh, uh, you know, the delta H matrix I had defined. So 
the uh, uh, if i just look at this quantity of the delta h matrix delta of del u1 by del x1 delta of del u yeah, no u1 by del x2 and delta of del u1 by del x3 so if i look at it using the same uh, my, no the relationship so we can write this in terms of you no know, using so we want to write uh, uh, this these derivatives the in terms of the derivatives with respect to uh, uh, reference coordinates so you can actually see this this can be written as g transpose into delta of del u1 by del capital x1 delta of del u1 upon del capital x2 and delta of del u1 upon del capital x3 so we can write it like this and uh, you know the g is nothing but equal to f uh, f inverse so this can be written as actually f inverse transpose and into of course the same thing delta of del u1 upon del x1 delta of del u1 upon del capital x2 and delta of del u1 upon capital x3 so we can write it like this so now uh, if you take the transpose of this relationship so if i take the transpose of this so i can also write that delta of del u1 upon del x1 small x1 delta of del u1 upon uh, no small yeah uh, so we can write this uh, x2 delta of del u1 upon del x3 this then can be written as when we take the transpose of this so this side we will get now the transpose of this into transpose of this so we will get a delta of del u1 upon del x1 delta of del u1 upon del x2 delta of del u1 upon del x3 and then f inverse transpose transpose would be f inverse so we will get here this has f inverse so these are the elements of is uh, you know small uh, no de delta is small h and so similarly you can write uh, uh, derivatives of uh, displacement u2 with respect to small x1 x2 x3 so you can write delta of del u1 upon del x1 uh, no sorry u2 not u1 so this is uh, de delta of del u2 upon del x2 and delta of del u2 upon del x3 so this can be written similarly in terms of delta of del u1 uh, u2 del u2 upon del x1 delta of del u2 upon del x2 delta of del u2 upon del x3 into f inverse so uh, basically uh, what i am trying to do is write all the three rows of uh, delta is small h matrix so you, you already know that and that can be written as you know in this manner so similarly delta of del u3 upon del x1 delta of del u3 upon del x2 delta of del u3 upon del x3 can be written as delta of del u3 upon del capital x1 delta of del u3 upon del capital x2 delta of del u3 upon del capital x3 into f inverse so from this what you can say now these are the three rows first row second row and third row of delta is small h matrix so i can say that delta is small h matrix can actually be written as and now this i am denoting as delta capital h 
Now this is the first row of delta capital H. Delta capital H is the displacement gradient with respect to reference coordinates, and delta small h is the displacement gradient matrix with respect to current coordinates. So I can you now this whole all these three rows are delta H basically. So that can be written as delta capital H into F inverse. Delta uh, now the rows of delta capital H are these. So both of them are displacement gradients. Delta is small h is displacement gradients with respect to current coordinates, and delta capital H the displacement gradient matrix with respect to reference coordinates. So you get this relationship. So now once we have this uh, delta H, so we can uh, rewrite the now delta W sigma. If you look at the virtual work of stresses, is equal to integration over V naught, and then we have uh, trace of let me put J yeah, anywhere. J you can write anywhere. So we have here uh, sigma, and then uh, let me start with this delta H transpose. Into J D V naught. So if I start with this, uh, so I uh, can write this as you will see delta W sigma virtual work of stresses integration over a V naught and then trace of sigma and now delta H transpose can be written as as you see now this is a delta H small H this relationship. So we we take transpose of this. We will get F inverse transpose into delta H transpose into J D V naught. So we can write it like this. Now, as per the definition of uh, first Peale-Kirchhoff stress tensor, you have this sigma into F inverse transpose is actually your first Peale-Kirchhoff stress tensor. So you can see that the virtual work of stresses can be written as V naught trace of we have here uh, uh, this uh, sigma f in sigma j into sigma into f inverse transpose is equal to p. So we will have this as p into delta capital H uh, transpose into d v naught. So now c b. So what it means is that the first Peale Kirchhoff stress tensor. Is conjugate to uh, displacement gradient defined with respect to uh, uh, basically the uh, reference coordinates. So uh, you can say that P is conjugate to displacement gradient defined with respect to reference coordinates. And you will also uh, because delta H, if you look at, we had written this relationship F is equal to. I plus H. So if you take delta, so you can say the delta of F would actually be a delta of H. So you will also be able to write now this expression: uh, delta of W sigma is equal to integration over V naught trace of first Peale Kirchhoff stress tensor into delta H, and delta H can be written as delta F transpose. Into d v naught. So you can also say that the first pair of Kirchhoff stress tensor is conjugate to a deformation gradient f because now we get virtual work as p into delta f transpose as you are getting from this. So this is uh, now we can say based on this we can say that first pair of Kirchhoff stress tensor is conjugate to first pair of Kirchhoff. Stress tensor is conjugate to you can say two things to delta H displacement gradient or delta F. Both. I mean, it, you can either write in terms of delta H or you can write it in terms of delta F. So now. Uh, now what we want to do is uh, now we have written this in terms of uh, first Peale Kirchhoff stress tensor. Now we want to write it in terms of second Peale Kirchhoff stress tensor. So if I again start delta W sigma is equal to integration over V naught trace of basically 
if you uh, write p into delta h transpose yeah so into dv now yeah any anybody any any question yes sir what does this conjugate mean like uh, does this mean that yeah, their product will it. give work then yeah the uh, work, your product will give you the virtual work of uh, first piano kircha stress tension Okay. So yeah, it's a virtual work, virtual work of stresses. So one one simple formula we wrote in terms of Cauchy stress. So Cauchy stress uh, virtual work we wrote in terms of integration over the current volume, and then trace of sigma into delta h uh, uh, transpose or delta h into dVt we have written. So first pair of stress, uh, uh, you know, we uh, uh, is uh, conjugate to displacement gradient in the uh, Current coordinates, and then this is with respect to reference coordinates. Okay. Conjugate sir, means sir. conjugate means the product gives you virtual work of stresses. Okay. Or variation. Yes. Yeah. And sir, in the above equation, uh, like J is missing. Uh, like. No. Did we assume anything the, for no, J? J? Because in the formula, no. If you see. J into sigma into f inverse transpose is uh, p. P yes sir. Understood. Yeah, so that J is absorbed in p. So now you have this, and we have also derived the relationship between p and a s, the second Piola-Kirchhoff stress tensor. So we can write delta W sigma is equal to integration over v naught, and trace of then in place of p. P is equal to f into s. Now, if you remember, we have derived that relationship also. So we will have f into s and into delta h transpose. So we can write. You know, you make use of the relationship between P and s, and we can write. You uh, know, this relationship. Uh, then now, if you so this is now we uh, because we have used uh, second Piola-Kirchhoff stress tensor. And right now in the expression f is also there, delta h is also there. So we want to bring in single quantity, and that is actually the variation of Green-Lagrange strain tensor. So if you remember, we have defined this Green-Lagrange strain tensor. So uh, now we have defined it as e equal to half of F transpose into F plus I. Uh, no, sorry, minus I, not plus. I'm sorry. Minus I. So this is what we have defined as the Green-Lagrange strain tensor. So if we take its variation. So you will see that delta E will be equal to half of. We will have uh, delta F transpose into F. We apply the product rule plus. F transpose into delta of F, and I is a known quantity, so its variation is zero. So this is what you get. And uh, I have you no, know, we have already seen earlier that uh, F is equal to I plus H capital H. So I have I already said that from this you get delta F equal to delta of H. So then, what we can do is uh, we can write in place of uh, actually. So if you look at this, so we have uh, uh, we take that first transpose. Uh, yeah, that's the another um, important result I'm going to use is now if you look at delta W sigma. So I'm rewriting this relationship. Now what you can do? Uh, now here you have product of f into s into delta h transpose. You can actually write it as the transpose of f into s into delta s. That will also give you the same result because I have initially listed that you can write it in different ways. So then you can write it as uh, basically uh, you know you have a s a s into f transpose. You can write. So delta W sigma from this, know what I have here. So I can also write it as integration over V naught trace of 
and then I take the transpose of this and this without transpose. So I can write it as then S transpose is equal to S because it is symmetric. So we, we can write this as S into F transpose into delta H dv naught. So I can write it like this. So you have you know, S into F transpose into delta H into dv naught. And uh, then what uh, you can do is uh, further this delta of W sigma because you can take transpose of any pair and you know it, it gives you the same relationship. What I wrote over here that when we are writing the virtual work, so you can write either in this form or you take the transpose of the first and into second or the tra first into transpose of the second. So any of these three forms are uh, will give you the same result. So that is what uh, no, I am making use of that and I have written this. Now what we can do is we can also write it as because S is symmetric. So S transpose is equal to S. So I can take the transpose of now this quantity. So you can also write this as integration over V naught trace of then you have S and if you take the transpose so you can write it as delta of H transpose into F transpose F will become F into dV now. So yeah, you get this. So now there are uh, two different expressions. One is S into F transpose, uh, no S into F transpose into delta H, that is one expression is this. The other expression is S into delta H transpose plus F. So if we sum these two and divide by two, that will also give us uh, delta W sigma. So from these two, we can write delta W sigma is equal to integration over V naught, trace of, and then I have S over here, and uh, half of course I can write it anywhere. So uh, no, I can write it as uh, S and then half, and then again I write uh, AF transpose into delta H, plus uh, delta H transpose into F. So sum of those two I am writing. So yeah, into dv naught. So you can write it like this. Now what you can do is no, see slowly we are going towards the variation of green Lagrange strength tensor. So delta W sigma is equal to V naught and uh, trace of, and uh, now if you see, uh, this is what? We, we know that uh, no delta F equal to delta H. So I have written here, uh, if you delta E is equal to delta F transpose, so delta F equal to delta H, so it will become delta H transpose into F plus F transpose into delta H. So this is essentially your delta E. So now you can uh, look at this trace of, will be we will have S and then you are going to have this delta E. So that is uh, basically this term is delta E. So you have S into delta E dv naught. Are you getting this point? So we have written the same expression in two different ways and then summing up these two and dividing it by two. So we essentially get the expression for delta E because delta E is delta F, half of delta F transpose F plus, a, plus F transpose delta F and delta F equal to delta H. So essentially what I have here is basically your delta E. So you get finally the virtual work of stresses in terms of second pure creature of stress tensor and variation in green Lagrange strain tensor. So now once you have this, so now the conclusion here, no, similarly we can say the way I said over here that uh, first pure creature of stress tensor is uh, conjugate to delta H or delta F. So similarly you can say that second pure creature of stress tensor is conjugate to green Lagrange
strain tensor so yeah that's uh, no you so you have three things one is i uh, know your uh, uh, the virtual work of stresses can be written in this manner so if you write it in the uh, you know uh, current uh, configuration then you will have v integration over vt and trace of sigma into delta h or delta h transpose if you write in terms of reference configuration so then v not into dv not j will come so he, from here we are saying that uh, the uh, cause stress is conjugate to uh, delta s displacement gradient with respect to current coordinates that is one then second result we got here that first pl curve of stress tensor is conjugate to uh, either the no uh, uh, deformation gradient f or displacement gradient h with respect to reference coordinates and third result we are getting over here that uh, uh, second pl curve of stress tensor is conjugate to green lagrange strain tensor so you can write the virtual work of stresses in three different forms either in terms of sigma either in terms of p or you can write it in terms of s so these are the three different ways you can write basically this virtual work of stresses now uh, you can go back and use the same uh, if you use the void notation so delta sigma can also be written as and now the integration is with respect to reference coordinates so you can write this uh, quantity as either no the s transpose now i am putting this uh, second pl curve of stress tensor in a vector of 6 by 1 and into delta of e dv not this can also be written as integration over v delta of e transpose into s dv not so you can write it in this manner also ultimately because for the development of element level governing equations uh, we will use you know this form so that is why i am writing this so you will see if you look at the literature sometimes people do uh, finite element formulation with respect to first pl curve of stress tensor so they would use delta h over there or delta f uh, and if you are using directly the second pl curve of stress tensor then you will use the green lagrange strain tensor as it is written here and as i had already mentioned to you that uh, if the displacement gradient is small so then all forms will be basically uh, close to each other one and the same of course the result is otherwise also same all three are giving you the same things so now in this expression delta w sigma delta w sigma is equal to this this expression i will be using this for the further development of the element level governing equations so uh, in this of course as you know we have already defined so uh, delta e is nothing but so if you look at here so for uh, delta of e is actually equal to delta of e11 we have defined the components of a uh, green lagrange strain tensor already so delta e11 delta e22 delta e33 twice of delta e12 twice of delta e23 twice of delta e31 so this is your delta e here and of course s is the components of uh, uh, your second pl curve of stress tensor s11 s22 s33 s12 s23 and s31 in this expression so now uh, now coming to you know we want to develop the finite element formulation so if you look at the principle of virtual work i am uh, we started with the weak form so either you can say the weak form or principle of virtual work sir uh, so yeah yes sir when we, when we were it, uh, writing it with the bigger bracket at yeah. that time we were mentioning the uh, tensor right earlier yeah. uh, where yeah. we were yeah. interested yeah okay and now and now we are using the column vector uh, yeah right okay okay sir. yeah so that this this basically like what i have written over here and so when you multiply this uh, 3 by 3s matrix with 3 by 3 delta e matrix and take its trace so whatever you will get there you will get from this expression also where i have written uh, e and s as vectors say you know column vectors okay sir yeah so that gives you the same thing so now we look at the principle of virtual work 
or big firm uh, both are basically the expressions are same so integration over v not the virtual work of stresses is delta of e transpose delta of e transpose into sigma uh, s dv not minus the integration over v not and then the virtual work of body forces so delta u1 delta u2 delta u3 transpose and now the body forces have to be referred to reference configuration when we started with the weak form you know the better residual statement and weak form so I, there i had used a small f b a small f b1 small f b2 small f b3 those were the body forces referred to uh, current configuration uh, acting in the current configuration but then here we are writing body forces referred to reference configuration so let's say capital f b1 capital f b2 capital f b3 into dv not so this is the virtual work of body forces referred to reference configuration minus integration over s not uh, the subtraction so delta u1 delta u2 delta u3 transpose and then here we will have now when i wrote uh, la, you know the last class uh, better residual statement and then the big form so i had used the traction uh, you know acting in the surfaces of uh, current configuration so there i had used small t n1 small t n2 small t n3 now the tractions refer to uh, reference configuration i am using capital t t n1 capital t n2 capital t n3 into d s not is equal to 0 so this is the virtual work finally written in this form so here if you see as i already explained where uh, this fb1 fb2 fb3 these are the body forces refer to reference configuration and similarly you have the traction vector tn1 tn2 tn3 so these these are the traction this is traction vector traction vector uh, refer to reference configuration So now, uh, now we based on now this we have got the virtual work in this form. What I have written is in terms of second pillar Kirchhoff stress tensor and uh, Green Lagrange strain tensor. Although you can also work with first pillar Kirchhoff stress tensor and the uh, you know variation of uh, 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 this displacement gradient or uh, variation of the uh, deformation gradient, uh, delta H or delta F. Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, this how we know that uh, the virtual work of the body force and yeah. the reaction force is in the current with uh, when referred to the reference mm -hmm. configuration is given by yeah. this expression. Yeah. So this so how what is your, yeah, what is your question? Uh, sir, how we know that the virtual work of the forces and tractions when they are referred to the current configuration is given yeah. by this equation. That's how we come to that. Yeah, so I think if you remember when I had written the big form yesterday, so we had uh, this uh, in the, uh, I know you, if you remember, uh, we have written here uh, integration over Vt delta u1 delta u2 delta u3 transpose into small fb1 small fb2 small fb3 into uh, dvt and dvt is j into dv naught. So j into fb1 small fb1 small fb2 small fb3 we are writing as basically capital FB1, capital FB2, capital FB3. So it is coming from there. 
ഓക്കെ and is slightly a lengthier deri- uh, lengthier derivation but similar thing for this traction vector also okay yeah so now uh, you know what i want to do is uh, develop the element level governing equations so to develop, to develop the element level governing equation let me do for a general 3d case so now how do we from this uh, Uh, you know the virtual work statement what we have here how do we then develop the element level governing equations so for a, now you need delta e so uh, if you remember we have uh, the expressions for components of green lagrange strain tensor so to develop the element uh, level governing equations we need to make use of this i uh, know that we have to take the variation of strain components so i will write just for one you can write similarly for other so e11 we had written as del u1 upon del x1 plus uh, half of we had uh, del u1 upon del x1 whole square plus del u2 upon del x1 whole square plus del u3 upon del x1 whole square so this is what we had written as uh, e11 so from this you can see that delta e11 would be equal to delta of delta of del u1 upon del x1 and plus now if you look at these terms so delta of del u1 by del x1 square would be twice of uh, del u1 by del x1 into delta del u uh, del u1 by del x1 so the first term then we will, uh, will become del u1 by del x1 into delta of del u1 by del x1 plus similarly the second term would be del u2 by del x1 into delta of del u2 by del x1 and the third term will become del u3 by del x1 into delta of del u3 by del x1 so no like that you can write so you would be able to similarly write uh, delta of e22 would be equal to delta of del u2 upon del x2 and plus you will have del u1 upon del x2 into delta of del u1 upon del x2 plus del u uh, del u2 upon del x2 into delta of del u2 upon del x2 plus delta of del u3 upon del x2 into delta of del u3 upon del x2 so like that no you can write similarly or you, know, you the variation you know you can write same way delta e33 and then now similarly if you remember uh, this uh, twice of e12 uh, expression we had written so that was del u1 by del x2 plus del u2 by del x1 plus we had uh, del u1 upon del x1 into del u1 upon del x2 plus del u2 upon del x1 into del u2 upon del x2 plus del u3 upon del x del x1 into del u3 upon del x2 so this is twice of e12 so you can write twice of delta e12 will be equal to delta of i know this del u1 upon del x2 plus delta of del u2 upon del x1 and plus now here you will again you apply the product rule so you will get delta of del u1 upon del x1 into del u1 upon del x2 plus del u1 upon del x1 into delta of del u1 upon del x2 and so like that for other two terms also you will write in a similar manner you can write the other terms also exactly the same way and so also you would be able to write uh, you should be able to write delta twice of delta e23 and twice of delta e31 in a similar manner you take the variation so now what we want to do we want to write uh, uh, delta e in terms of a straight displacement matrix that is b sir uh, sir uh, in paper can we write this in the indicial form uh, like or, yeah, or you can write, uh, you can write 
let us say you uh, you know e i i you want uh, you know you can write in terms of e i j you know you can say e i j equal to uh i you know uh, u alpha comma i and plus a u alpha no i think yeah you can write in the initial form yes okay sir yeah you can write it half of yeah uh, u i comma j plus u j comma i plus uh, half of u alpha comma i u alpha comma j like that you can write and then take the variation yeah you can do that okay sir yeah so now uh, you want to uh, know this delta e so delta of e so we want to write which is basically nothing but delta of e11 delta of e22 delta of e33 delta of e12 delta of e23 and delta of e31 so we want to write now this in the matrix form so i will just uh, tell you how we can do so now we will have two parts if you see here in the expressions for you uh, know these we have two set of parts one is the linear term so you have this linear term this linear term and here these two linear terms and so on the other set are uh, non linear terms so you have uh, like for example here you have del u1 by del x1 into delta of del u1 by del x1 so then you will keep del u1 by del x1 same and you will have you uh, know the delta of uh, del u1 by del x1 uh, then delta of del u2 by del x1 and so on so you will get this in two forms so one is the linear strain displacement matrix linear part will come so i will just uh, show you the and also you will have uh, degrees of freedom so say you will have u11 u21 u31 uh, the degrees of freedom at first node let us say and then u12 u22 u32 and like that you will have degrees of freedom let us say if it is a uh, no eight noted uh, brick element then this will be to vector of 24 by 1 at each node three degrees of freedom u1 u2 u3 so these are u1 u2 u3 at first node these are u1 u2 u3 at second node and so on so that's the first part and in terms of the safe functions then you will have the first term is the linear part as far as linear part is concerned that is you have this term so that will give you basically del n1 by del x1 0 0 del n2 by del x1 and then 0 0 and so on del n3 by del x1 and uh, then you will have 0 0 and so on now you have to write it so same way now if you look at the delta e22 which is uh, delta of del u2 by del x2 so we will have 0 del n1 by del x2 0 0 del n2 by del x2 0 0 del n3 by del x2 and 0 and so on you will write like that so you can write uh, similarly you no know, you can write for delta e33 in a similar similar manner and when you look at delta e12 so you have these two terms derivatives of u1 with respect to x2 and u2 with respect to x1 so we will have del n1 by del x2 and del n1 by del x1 and then 0 and then same again del n2 by del x2 del x2 and del n2 by del uh, x x1 0 and so on del n3 by del x2 del n3 by del x1 0 and so on so that's how you will write for the shear term similarly you can write for er e23 and e3 so this is essentially the linear strain displacement matrix plus we will have the second part coming from the non linear so now if you look at the non linear part so we will have the degrees of freedom are same now that is u11 u21 u31 and u12 u22 u23 and so on so this is the vector of elemental degrees of freedom this is also going to be 24 by 1 and of course this matrix is 6 by 24 and uh, this matrix will also be 6 by 24 now what you have to do here is uh, now in the delta e1 you have got these terms so uh, now you have to look at this 
that you have got the u1 term you have got the u2 term you have got the u3 term so delta u2 also you have got delta u3 also you have got so you have to keep these terms as it is uh, but uh, these are no written in terms of uh, derivatives of the safe functions and the uh, you know the variation of uh, degrees of freedom so yeah i think uh, i missed one thing that i have to put delta here so delta will be there everywhere here no delta delta with all the degrees of freedom please uh, make a correction on that so delta with all the degrees of freedom over here because we are writing no delta of a displacement gradient so delta has to be there with the degrees of freedom those are, those are the unknown quantities so uh, yeah now here uh, now if you look at how do we write uh, these terms so it has contribution from u1 it has contribution from u2 it has contribution from u3 so we will write this term as del u1 upon del x1 that is as it is there and then we will have del n1 by del x1 and then we have del u2 by uh, del x1 and uh, so that time the first time writing as it, as it is a second we are expanding in terms of derivatives of the safe function and variation in the degrees of freedom so we will have del u2 by del x1 into del n1 by del x1 then you will have del u3 by del x1 and del n1 by del x1 so these are the first three uh, columns then the fourth column onwards again you will have del u1 by del x1 that will remain as it is and this will become del n2 by del x1 then del u2 by del x1 and this will become del n2 by del x1 and then you will have del u3 by del x1 and del n2 by del x1 and so on now you will write it like this so you have to write for, for all of these so finally you can say that delta of e will be equal to this i am calling as linear strain displacement matrix and this has a non linear strain displacement matrix because it is in terms of derivatives of safe function and also the gradients of the displacements so we can write this as b plus b nl into delta of de variation in the elemental degrees of freedom so you can actually write uh, this quantity no in this manner is that clear i think you should be able to write i have just written for uh, i know few uh, representative uh, components of uh, variation of green lagrange strain tensor you should be able to fill up this matrix in a similar manner so now uh, if you look at also we will have delta u1 delta u2 delta u3 which is also appearing in the virtual work so this you would be able to write in the form of h into delta of de so now if you uh, look at the go back to the principle of virtual work so you can write this as integration over v not delta of now the first uh, term is delta e transpose so delta e transpose would become delta d e transpose and then b plus uh b nl transpose and then you have into a second pierre lacrange of stress tensor into dv not and minus we will have integration over volume v not delta of uh, d transpose into h transpose into fb uh, body force vector dv not and minus we have integration over reference surface so that is again delta of de transpose into h transpose into tn ds not and this is equal to zero so now your delta de transpose no delta d is arbitrary so then for this integral to be zero the other you know the integrand has to be zero and the integrand is a product of delta de tra transpose and other terms so then the other terms have to be zero uh, so far arbitrary delta de we get the element level governing equation as integration over volume 
then we have b plus b nl transpose into s dv naught minus integration over v naught we have h transpose into fb dv naught minus integration over s naught h transpose into tm ds naught is equal to a null vector so this is what we have got finally know this this is the element level governing equation and which is non linear why it is non linear because now the strain displacement relations are non linear so when you write this s in terms of uh, i know the strain displacement matrix so uh, i know in terms of constitutive matrix and strain and strain is a non linear function of displacement so therefore because of the first term this element level governing equation is a non linear equation so this is element level and this is similar to what we have been doing earlier only thing is now we have this uh, bnl term and of course we are differentiating the reference configuration and the current configuration and the corresponding uh, stress definitions so this is element level governing equation hello sir yeah, yeah. Sir, actually we have class at 8 12 o'clock which which class uh, advanced dynamics okay so then you want me to stop now uh, uh, here yes actually 12 o'clock is the, uh, we have classes sir so we can continue till 12 after that we will have to go sir so uh, i can take another 2 3 minutes right okay yes sir okay so uh, now see this is the element level governing equation and it is a non linear equation so then next question arises how do we solve this so uh, now the solution would be based on uh, newton raphson iteration uh, iteration so we will use newton raphson uh, method is used to solve this newton raphson is used to solve this so now uh, what uh, how will do how do we do this how do we uh, transform this equation to uh, you know in the incremental form so that we can use newton raphson method so we have to again uh, look at the way we did i think earlier also if you remember i have discussed how to solve non linear equations so in the plasticity if you remember we had discussed that so similar approach is used here so now there are two things uh now this whole thing is uh, you now the in the taylor series you are going to take uh, the first two terms so i think uh, yeah i will stop here because the to complete this newton raphson also it will take more time so i think i want to stop here and if you want to ask questions you can ask i will continue this so we are going to solve this using newton raphson method by retaining first two terms in the newton raphson so first term uh, you know the constant term is all these terms evaluated at the previous iteration and plus the incremental term uh, coefficient of which are evaluated at previous iteration into the incremental terms from the current iteration based on that we solve this equation so those equations i will derive in the next class so now if you have any questions and doubts you can ask yeah i have 2 uh, 3 minutes you can ask questions if you have sir uh if this was a case of 2d problem yeah so, so in that case the force vector and the traction vector it will have only two components yeah right it, right okay. yeah it will have only two components here yeah. if it is a plane stress problem or plane strain 2d problem then it will have only two components fb1 fb2 tn1 and tn2 and my s will have three components in this s11 s22 and s12 okay sir yeah and the corresponding of course is strain displacement relations sir yeah so like in the starting we did that trace of uh, matrix a into b that is yeah. equal to trace of a transpose b only for symmetric a right 
uh, yeah so see the when you write this so uh, it is actually not uh, it is not necessary that it is symmetric it can be anything no when you write uh, this trace of any two matrices 3 by 3 matrices a to b into b either this will be equal to trace of say a transpose into b will be equal to trace of a into b transpose for any a b matrices 3 by 3 matrices this is true for any any a b matrices not necessary symmetric okay okay sir. yeah राइट सो we had to differentiate so that we are not using root here no we are not using root here we are just using the product okay but i have no this although here uh, this cauchy stress tensor is symmetric for non polar materials but even if it is asymmetric we can write this trace of sigma delta h or sigma transpose delta h or sigma into delta h transpose all will give you the same expression you can try you can take any three general matrices a and b A one one, A one two, like that, and B one one, B one two, and uh, <coughs> yeah, you can try. You know yourself, cross check that this is uh, what I have written here is uh, valid. Okay, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So, any other question? Anybody? Any other question? Anybody? Uh, sir, uh, for this geometric nonlinearity, sir, which reference will you recommend? Ah, uh, yeah, you can refer to this Yasgar uh, Vatti uh, book. Okay, sir. Sir, any book which is available online, sir, because Yasgar Vatti is not available online. Yeah, I have not seen online books. Yeah, I, I, I really don't know because I, I didn't get that online books. Okay, thank you. Okay. so any other question anybody any other question okay so if there are no questions i am stopping thank you all for your attention